man. Am I driving okay? I think we're parked, man. That was Cheech and Chong. The marijuana conversation has lit up once again after three states in the U.S. voted to lighten their pot laws. You know my view on this sort of stuff. We need less laws in this country, period. Not more. Sure, marijuana can harm you, but so can alcohol, junk food, firearms. The, the potential for harm doesn't justify the restriction of our liberties. And looks like liberal leadership contender Justin Trudeau has jumped on the bandwagon. Kinda. Sorta. He said this, I think we have to recognize first and foremost that the war on drugs as it, is, as it exists now doesn't work. So I am a huge supporter of decriminalization. He said this yesterday to a group of giggling high school students. He also toyed with full-on legalization. You might think this is a victory for marijuana advocates, but Trudeau has been surprisingly inconsistent on this record. Here's what he said earlier this year. My own issue is that we're trying to encourage people to drink less and smoke less tobacco to legalize something that we know is perhaps not as harmful but not necessarily healthy could be a step in the wrong direction but I do believe in free choice. It's almost like he's flip-flopping to secure votes. A politician do that? Why I never. What's the real Trudeau position here? Jody Emery is an editor of Cannabis Culture Magazine and the wife of the Prince of Pot, Mark Emery, who is currently in jail in the US on drug charges. Jody, I, I understand that, uh, that Mark has a bit of a history with Justin. That might, might tell us a bit about this. Uh, t tell me about that. Well, uh, Mark, certainly has spent some time with Justin Trudeau when he was at Idea City many years ago. And like many Canadians, I think it's fair to say that uh, Justin Trudeau has partaken in cannabis at some point in his lifetime. Right, I see. I, I've got a quote I want to put on the screen right now. In 2010, Justin, mm -hmm. uh, sort of being against marijuana, said, it's not your mother's pot. I lived in Whistler for years and have seen the effects we need all our brain cells to deal with their problems. That's really weird because I think he's kind of admitting that he spent a number of years in Whistler getting stoned and now he's saying, oh, I can't handle it anymore because I'm an old guy and now he just wants to take away everyone else's rights to it. Does that seem like a fair assessment? Well, it is pretty disappointing, uh, particularly when Bill C-10, the mandatory minimums at that time, it was called C-10, uh, when that was voted on in Parliament, Justin Trudeau stood up and voted in favour of it. And that meant in favour of mandatory minimum prison time for pot. So he has been flip-flopping a lot, but, you know, I suppose if somebody doesn't hold a firm position, you can try and woo them over to your side. So I'll try and do that with him. Yeah, it does seem to me like he's being just a bit of a typical politician and that he's saying things. I mean, nobody out there can really disagree with him in some sense because he's really catering to every different view on marijuana. But it seems to me that at least the marijuana advocacy crowd is is hip to this inconsistency. And and I think it could result in him having having no support. But you are saying that you're you'll st you're still going to try and woo him in, in your direction. Well, absolutely. I mean, the Liberal Party voted that they would support legalization as part of their party platform. And we know that 66% of Canadians in the last poll support legalization. Almost 60% of Conservative voters want legalization. And we know that the numbers continue to rise, not just among young people, but especially 55 and older. They voted mostly in favor of legalization. So if Justin Trudeau or Stephen Harper or anybody would like to get the majority of Canadians on board. The majority want legalization, so they should certainly cater to that demand. Now, Jody, our, our viewers might not be familiar with your story and the story uh, of your husband. Could you give us a, a little crash course on, on the law in play here and why your husband is in jail in the U.S.? Well, Mark, for many years, starting in Ontario, used peaceful civil disobedience to break bad laws. Like he didn't like Sunday shopping laws, censorship of music, censorship of books. So he went to court to try and change those laws. And he decided to do the same with marijuana laws. He started selling marijuana seeds through the mail to people anywhere in the world. 1994 and that was out of Vancouver BC and all the money raised would go back towards political campaigns ballot initiatives elections all sorts of activism and he did so that just to be clear for the viewers by selling seeds you know he he didn't have armed guys with him he wasn't like a, a criminal <laughs> drug was, runner or, or a gangster it was He's marked just with a bunch seeds. of envelopes it was envelopes and stamps and sent through the postal system with two different people helping him out here in Vancouver there were no American associates there was no organized crime the US drug 
Drug Enforcement Administration admitted themselves that they tracked all the money and it all went to politics. And they admitted on the day of his arrest, when he was facing extradition to the United States, that it was all about the money he was giving to legalization reform. But even Mark's own prosecutor, John McKay, district attorney, has now become a legalization advocate, not because he wants to get high, but because he realizes that billions of dollars are wasted on drug law enforcement, the problem hasn't changed at all, and gangsters continue to get rich while young people continue to get involved with drugs and public safety is put at risk, not to mention police officers and everyone out there. So prohibition as a policy, which Mark has been fighting against his whole life, is now joining up with allies from law enforcement, the political spectrum, health officers. Most people agree that using the criminal law to punish pot users is not reducing use at all and is only a waste of precious tax dollars at a time when we can't afford to waste any money at all. Now, Jody, I can imagine what some what some contrarians might say to that, and they'd say, well, you know, it's, it's a gateway drug, so it's going to be fueling people to get into uh, even worse drugs. Uh, how do you respond to that? Well, first I would say that if it is a gateway drug, it's because it's illegal. So if you go and buy your pot from a drug dealer, he might introduce you to hard drugs, trying to get you to use them. And secondly, you know, gateway drugs, let's talk about alcohol. I'm pretty sure most people who use pot drank alcohol first. And just because somebody might encounter other drugs doesn't mean we should put them in prison. People make bad choices. I wouldn't snowboard down a triple black diamond ski hill, but some people choose to, and they take precautions to do it safely. We need to educate people about making smart, responsible, healthy decisions, but not punish them when they make a bad decision. We need to help them like we would help an alcoholic or a nicotine addict. We help them. We don't punish them for their bad decisions. Jody, we're out of time, but I'd like to thank you very much for joining us on this program this evening. Great. Thank you so much.